Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. I am so happy to be sewing along with you The Daryl's Drive by Chris W. Design. I can tell you I have had this pattern in my pattern stash for well over three years. I have no idea why it took me so long to make this. I was so happy when Chris said I could do a tutorial on this. Not only have we done a tutorial on this, we have also done a sew along class with this. Um, again, if you're seeing this and you're not part of those classes, um, they are running on Tuesdays from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, in September. Um, so I guess if you're seeing this tutorial after September, then um, the classes are over, but you can definitely sew along with us if you need a slowed down version of this through those classes. Um, that link is down below in the subscription. You could definitely catch all of those replays for this. Um, otherwise, you got this tutorial. Um, yeah, it it is just, I had so much fun making this. Um, let me show you some of the features of this bag. So you can see it's got this very vintage type feel, rounded, almost doctor bag shape. Um, you could do your straps any length that you like if you wanted it to be more handbag. It'd be very easy to put on a metal strap connectors if you wanted to do that. There's instructions for both the vinyl connectors like I've done or metal connectors, whichever way you choose. Um, yeah, so let me show you. So that's the front, the back. There is a hidden cell phone pocket there. It fits my iPhone 13 Pro Max easily. It is held together with a magnetic snap. Now in the pattern, it does have a turn lock right here. I opted out for the turn lock because I wanted to put my nameplate there and the magnetic snaps hold it in place just fine. And it opens up nice and big, as you can see. Um, there's my, the zipper overlay pocket I do in all my bags as well as my slip pockets. But yeah, um, this is a birthed bag. Um, I can tell you right now, if you are on a domestic machine, do not, well, you can if you want to. Um, doing it in all vinyls may uh, be a little bit thick in some places as we do so all the way around the um, sides here. So that's going through a lot of, like that's top stitching, I mean. Um, the pattern is written for cottons to be used on the fronts and the sides with some vinyl accents like on here and the bottom. Um, but yeah, so what I learned making this is there is some thicknesses, especially when you get into the sides here. I don't know if my Juki 2010Q would have handled it with the vinyls, but it definitely would have handled it if I had chosen cotton. Um, I'm on an industrial, so I had absolutely no issues with it. Uh, materials I use in this bag, this incredible Friends inspired faux leather I got from Fangirl Fabrics. Um, I will put the links to all of these down below. Um, this has a foam interfacing in the main panels. I use the Pretty in Pink Sew Foam from Galaxy Customs. Equivalents would be Soft and Stable, um, by any Soft and Stable or Pellon Flex Foam. In the sides of the interfacing is a fusible fleece. I just use a low loft fusible fleece for that. Um, I did add in a Decaville Heavy in the bottom for my bottom stabilizer. All of my cotton pieces are interfaced with EB Fuse Light, which is similar, that's from Emmeline Bags, similar to an SF101 or a medium woven interfacing, as well as in these tops, there is Decaville Heavy in there as well. Um, all of my matte black hardware is from Serial Bag Makers. Um, what else, what else? I think that's it. Anyways, how about we get to making this bag? Okay, so you're gonna need some rivets, number five zipper tape, your nameplate, four rectangular rings, two magnetic snaps, purse feet, and a zipper pull. Okay, so you're gonna need your sew foam for later on, two handle pieces, Four connectors, if you are doing the connector version like I am. Your two main exterior body panels. Your two lining panels. 
your two phone pocket lining pieces, two zipper pocket lining pieces, slip pocket piece, two lining side gussets, your two side gussets for the exterior backed with fusible fleece, your bottom piece backed with Decaville Heavy, your four top panels, two backed with Decaville Heavy outside of the seam allowances and two just as is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do my handles off camera. If you need a class for that, that's down below in the description. Okay, so purse feet. So I'm going to measure in for my purse feet two and a half inches in and one and a half inches up and make a mark. I'm going to make a mark in all four of those corners with those measurements. Once you have those marked out, go ahead and install those as per your manufacturer's instructions. All right, so what I like to do is go ahead and back those prongs with some duct tape just to add a little extra stability. Okay, so now we're going to take our two top panels that have the Decaville Heavy on the back of them. I'm just going to find the centers of the long sides. Make sure they are definitely center as we want to be sure that our magnetic snaps are going to match up. Okay, so for this one being the back one, uh, you see I'm drawing down my center line and measuring down one and a half inches. So this is actually where you would go ahead and install the male side of your turn lock if you are doing that option. I am not doing that option. Now you're going to go ahead and measure in one and five eighths of an inch away from the vinyl part, not the stabilizer. I made that mistake myself. So um, yeah, so my straps will be really close together here. And this marks where you will install the male side of your magnetic snaps. Now on the opposite side, you're going to do the exact same thing and install your female sides like so. Go ahead and back those with some duct tape just to add a little extra stability again. So on that back piece, if you're doing that um, turn lock, you would have the male part installed here. Now you're going to take your top bands that do not have the uh, Decaville Heavy on them. Once again, find your centers. And on this one, I am actually going to go and install my nameplate here. So this will be for the front of the bag. So I found that center. I'm going to go ahead and install that. So that is done. Now we're going to take the one, uh, the front main panel. So our top panel, the one that does not have the turn lock on it. If you're doing the turn lock, we are going to clip these together, leaving the bottom edge open. So make sure you're definitely clipping the top edge, not the bottom edge, and the two short sides. And we're going to go and take this to the machine and sew around those three clip sides with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance and do the same with the other one as well. Okay, once that's done, you want to trim these corners as close as you can to the stitching. This just helps reduce that bulk a little bit. Now you're going to pull away just one layer of that seam. Once again, uh, trimming its seam allowance down. This just helps reduce that bulk for when we go to turn this out. So we have really nice, sharp seams. Okay, once you have that, go ahead and turn this uh, right side out through the opening in the bottom. Push out all those seams really good. If you've done this in cotton, you can definitely go ahead and give this a good press. I'm just going to use my little poker tool here to point out, poke out my corners. Okay, 
And then go ahead, I'm gonna use some clips to hold this in place, rolling that, those seams in between my fingers. And then we are going to go ahead and top stitch all around here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and baste the open side with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And you will do the same with the other top panel as well. So again, top stitching with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then basting the opening with a one eighth of an inch seam allowance. As you can see, Tiffany has just had her spa day and she is a little bit oily. And baste that open side with an eighth of an inch. Okay, so that is done. So the back would have had your male part. Now, if you're doing the turn lock where I have installed my nameplate, use the measurements in the pattern. That is where you will install the female side of your turn lock if you're doing that. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our connectors. I've drawn a center line down the middle of my connector pieces. Now I'm gonna use a double-sided tape to secure the long edges into that center line. I've done that with all four. Now what we want to do is put a little bit of double-sided tape on either end of those short ends and kind of put your rectangle ring into the center like I've done here. You're going to measure in as per the pattern piece where the placement of these are. Mine is a little bit off because I did have my magnetic snap placement wrong. So on the back side of the uh, top panel, you're going to secure one end of the um, connector and then bring it around the other connector side around the front end matching up the bottom. So what you've done is pretty much sandwiched that top panel in between the uh, two ends of the connectors. Now you can do two things here. You can either so top stitch across here and then base the bottom. I am actually going to go ahead and I am going to top stitch up my connectors and across and down. So where I'm going across, I'm lining up with that quarter of an inch top stitch. Now, if you didn't want to do this top stitch all the way around, you don't have to. You can just do the top stitch across just that top part and then secure the rest, rest, rest with rivets. But I like the look of a decorative top stitch here. So I am doing my rectangular top stitch on all four of my connectors. Okay, so that is done and now it is time making sure that these cleared those magnetic snaps making sure when snapped together my connectors are even which they are and now I'm going to go ahead and install in my um, rivets so I'm going to measure down a half inch from the top panels top edge and make a mark nice and centered and then another inch down I'm going to do that with all four connectors and install those double capped rivets because they will show on both sides. And that is our top panels complete. Okay, now, so we're going to work on our main panel. So these are not backed with foam just yet. What we want to do is on our main panels, find the top and bottom centers and make small clips or mark with a pen if you prefer. And then take your bottom panel and you're going to find the centers of the two long sides as well as the two short sides. Again, I like to do clips just because they don't wash away. Just make sure they're small and within the seam allowances. But again, you can also do um, markings on the back side of these pieces. Okay, now that that's done, I just have these orientated how they're going to go because I have directional fabric. I'm going to take uh, my bottom and put it right sides together with one of my main panels, making sure that my main panel um, is orientated the correct way so my print isn't upside down. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew across here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay. 
Once that is done, I'm going to press so the seam is pointing towards that bottom piece, like so. Oh, first, I just noticed that my fabric looks a little bit stressed out, so I'm actually going to add an extra line of stitching within the seam allowance, an eighth of an inch away from that first initial stitch line that we did. And that looks much better. So now I'm making sure my seam is pointing towards the bottom panel, and we are going to top stitch that in place through the bottom panel with an eighth of an inch top stitch. You're gonna repeat the exact same thing with the other panel. So this is what it looks like when that's all done. Next thing, what we're gonna do is lay out our foam, put this over top and use it as a template to cut out our foam piece and baste it on. And this is what it looks like. Now to prepare our side gusset pieces, we need to work on these darts. So you're going to match up the raw edges like so of the darts on both pieces. You will do this exact same thing with the lining side gussets as well. We're gonna go ahead and sew along that short dart with a quarter of an inch seam allowance for all of the darts, including the side panels or the lining side panels. Okay, now because I can't take this to the iron, we want our darts to be poking towards or facing towards the bottom, so inwards like so. So I'm just gonna go ahead and base the darts um, facing the right way, just so they are um, not in our way for later on. Um, if you have done this in fabric, you can definitely, instead of basting them in place, you can definitely take them to the iron and just press them in place. Now what we want to do is we want to match up those darts and find that bottom center, make a small snip, and find the center along the top. I also have it marked from when I drew out my pattern pieces, but I do like my snips. I just find they're a lot easier to see when you are at the machine um, to make sure everything is aligned where it needs to be. Okay, so now we're going to take this side. We're going to match up the bottom of our side gusset with the center of the short side of our bottom piece. You'll see the darts will almost exactly or pretty close align up with the bottom panel. If they don't, that's okay too. I'm going to bring up the sides of the main panel and the side panel, match those up, and then clip the rest of the way around, evenly distributing around the curve. Okay, now that that's done, we are going to take this to the machine and we are going to sew along here with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. This is a little bit hard to show at the machine because my bag is going to be kind of in the way, but you'll kind of see how I move this bag or the, this, the fabric around the curve as we sew around. So just ensure that you, everything is laying nice and flat, that you are not getting any nips or tucks. A stiletto may help when it comes to holding that fabric in place to get it around the curve. I didn't have to use one, but it could help if you're having issues holding it in place, depending what fabrics you have chosen to use. So just take it nice and slow to ensure you get a nice, even seam. You can see how I'm kind of turning the bag up on its bottom now like so as I go across the bottom and then as I come back to the side I'll be laying it down on one of the main panels as well. And because um, my vinyl is a little bit thicker in some places I am going to go in again and do another line of stitching an eighth of an inch away from this line of stitching we are doing here within, within the seam allowances. Just to give a little extra stitch um, security there. 
You do the same with the other side. Okay, so this is what the exterior looks like so far. This looks so much fun. Now we're going to take our cell phone pocket. You could choose to use lining like I did, or you could use your exterior fabric. It's completely up to you. Along one of the short sides of both pieces, you're going to mark the center piece. Decide which of this bag is going to be your back side. When you've chosen your back side, you're going to take that lining cell phone pocket piece, match up the center mark, and have them right sides together like so. And then we're going to go ahead and base the, or sew this in with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance just where that cell phone pocket is. This is such an ingenious way of doing this hidden cell phone pocket. I've never done anything like this before. It was a great learning um, moment. I love it when I learn new techniques and I will definitely maybe even be adding this into some of my future bags that I make. It is just such an amazing way of doing this. All right, so that is done. Now you wanna pull that cell phone pocket piece out like so, and we're gonna go ahead and along the line, the cell phone pocket piece, we're going to top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then on the exterior piece, so my friend's fabric here, we are going to top stitch just where that um, cell phone pocket goes with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So that's the eighth of an inch seam allowance done on the cell phone pocket side. And then put it back under the machine with the cell phone pocket still pointing to the right and do a quarter of an inch just below where we attached that cell phone pocket. So you can see both top stitch lines. Here's the quarter inch, here's the eighth of an inch. Okay, so lining pieces. I went ahead and I already did my zipper pocket and my slip pockets as I do in all my bags. Make sure you leave your zipper pocket bottom open. Those classes are down below. Now we're gonna take our lining panels, put them right sides together, and I'm doing this slightly different than the pattern. In the pattern, she has it turned through the pocket. I just know my carpal tunnel is just going to kill me if I try to do that. So what you're going to do is we're going to leave an opening right about this big-ish or so. And we are going to sew from the side to those lines we marked to leave the opening with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Do a couple good back stitches just to strengthen those stitches for when we turn it through. Hop on over to the other line we drew and once again sew with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and what this has done as is it's left us an opening in the bottom of the lining for easy turning later and we will close that up through the zipper pocket in the end. Go ahead and install the side gussets the same way matching up that center seam of the main panels with the center seam of our gussets. And when you're all done that, this is what we have with the opening in the bottom, the opening in the bottom of the zipper pocket. Now we're back to our cell phone pocket. So what we want to do is we want to take the back side top panel. So this is the one that will have your um, turn lock mail piece if you're doing that. We're going to put it right sides together, matching up those center marks with our other cell phone pocket piece. And we are going to baste that on. So again, this is the back top panel piece that has, if you are doing the turn lock like the pattern that has the male side of it and these are right sides together. Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna take our lining and decide which one you want uh, to be at the back. I like my uh, zipper pocket to be at the back. Turn your lining right side out and we are going to put this like so, right sides together with our lining piece. Now you are going to notice that the top panels seem to reach past that side seam. That is okay, that is what we want. I'm gonna open up my seams a little bit here just to help spread out that bulk for when we do uh, top stitching later on. So 
So again, this is the back of the lining. And we're going to sew across here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you're only catching the one lining panel, kind of have uh, the other panel tucked out of the way like I have here. Just be wary, aware that you are only sewing through the back lining panel and the top panel, the back top panel. All right, so this is what that looks like. We're gonna pull the cell phone piece out like so, and we're gonna go ahead and top stitch along the cell phone piece um, right at that seam with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So you're not top stitching through the top panel, you are just top stitching through that cell phone piece, cell phone pocket piece. Okay, now we get to start putting this all together. So now you are going to take the front top panel and the exterior of your bag, put it right sides together like so with your main panel nice and centered. So this is the exterior, not the lining piece. This is where it's a little different because we installed the back one on the lining piece and we've installed the front one on the exterior piece. And you will see that the top panel does come within these side seams when you're using the exterior. So go ahead and baste that in place. Oh, you're so close to being done. Time to put it all together. So this is what that looks like. You're gonna go ahead and put your exterior wrong side out now. So now we have our exterior wrong side out, our lining right side out. We're gonna put the lining right sides together with our exterior. And we are going to start, make sure your cell phone pockets are both situated in this right way. So they are right sides together. Match up the centers of your front main panel like so. Go ahead and find the centers of your sides and match that up as well. Now you're gonna see that our side seams do not match up for our exterior and our lining, that is okay. Find the centers and, and clip together those side seams. Match up where our cell phone pockets are matching up and put a few clips there to hold that in place. Now we will not be sewing along where that cell phone pocket is because that will close our cell phone pocket, but you'll see how that's gonna to come together here in a moment. Once you have all those secured, go ahead and evenly distribute the fabric around the rest of the bag with clips all the way around. I used a lot of clips, I didn't want it to slip. Um, I'm making sure I have my exterior um, seams facing towards the side gussets. Now that's done. Now we are also going to go ahead and clip together the three loose sides of our cell phone pocket. Now at our cell phone pocket where our stitching was where we had top stitch, we're going to mark in 3 8 of an inch like so from where our sides of our pockets are and that stitching. And what we're going to do to sew this together is we are going to end up starting at the bottom of the pocket here, sewing 3 8 of an inch all the way up. When you get to here, pivot, go all the way around, come back down to that mark and finish at the bottom pocket. So once again, I'm starting at the bottom of that cell phone pocket. We're treating it like it is an extension of the exterior of the bag. Now 
Now you're going to sew all the way up to that 3 eighths of an inch line. When you get within 3 eighths of, eighths of an inch into that line, you're going to put your needle down and pivot. And then continue around the whole circumference of the bag, sewing together the exterior and the lining. I'm going to switch camera angles here momentarily so you get a little bit of a better view of how I am holding my bag against the um, the cylinder arm. If I was doing this on a flatbed, I think I would be stitching it together from the inside of this bag just to make it a little bit more easier to maneuver it under the needle. Okay, so here we go. So this is how I am holding it against the cylinder arm. It shows it a little bit better. But again, if I was on a flatbed, I would go ahead and sew this together from the inside just to make it a little less awkward. Okay, so when I come to that 3 eighths of an inch mark that we had made at the pocket side, we're going to make sure we put our needle down and pivot and then sew down the rest of the pocket. So what this has done is we have finished edge already that we had sewn previously for that cell phone pocket on the exterior and this is just closing up the rest of the bag. Okay, so now that that's done, you can go ahead reach in through the lining and through that bottom that we left, go ahead and pull this through. I won't lie, this was really tough with an all vinyl bag, but I do have pretty bad uh, carpal tunnel, but trust me, endeavor through and it is so worth it. This is why we left the opening in the bottom because I knew I wouldn't be able to turn this vinyl through the opening in the pocket. So this just helped give a little bit better of space. Once you're all done that, go ahead and push out all of those seams nice and taut. Do not stick your lining inside the bag yet. We are not done with top stitching. So you're going to keep your lining poking out this way. You are going to keep your exterior going the opposite way. Just double check that my cell phone pocket works and it does. It's perfect. It's nicely hidden there, giving that a good finger press. Now what we want to do is around these sides, we want to top stitch these. Now this is where it gets tough because um, it does get really thick at the top where we start, start and stop these theme seams, especially if you have used vinyl. So please make sure that you're choosing materials that you know your machine can handle. That's where if you're on a domestic machine, cottons would be probably the better choice right here or a thinner vinyl, just because this is where, if you're gonna have problems, this is the section that's gonna give you a problem with thickness. Again, I'm on an industrial machine, so I don't have to worry about the thickness so much. So I've just rolled those in like so, and I'm going to top stitch this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance around the, all four of our side gussets. So again, I'm taking it to my cylinder arm, which is perfect for doing this kind of job. If I was doing this and I didn't have a free arm or a cylinder arm, I would definitely be doing this from the gusset side so I could lay that nice and flat against my flatbed. So go ahead. Um, we started this right where the seam meets the lining, if that makes sense, making sure you're not catching that top panel and slowly going around and top stitching with a quarter of an inch seam allowance.
Once again, being very careful that you are not catching any of your lining when you're stitching this together. Okay, so this is me doing the lining side. The lining side is much easier to do. There's not nearly as much bulk, but you're gonna do the exact same thing with the lining side gussets that we did with the exterior. Top stitching them all with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once again, making sure you're not catching any of your exterior pieces in there. Now that that's all done, all four of those gussets are top stitched, you can go ahead and stuff your lining into the bag. Give it a really good finger press, rolling those seams down where they need to go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip my sides, my side seams. Actually, I lied. First, what we're going to do is we're going to be top stitching these, but not in a continuous line. So a half inch away from the seams, we're going to make a half inch line. We are only going to be top stitching in between those half inch lines. So you're going to do these half inch lines on the sides as well as the two main panels. And the reason we're going to only be top stitching in between there is right where our side gusset seams are. It is super duper thick. So we do not want to be sewing through that thickness at all. That is why we are going to be going half inch in and, and top stitching in between there. Again, as I just said in that note there, if I was on a flatbed and I didn't have a free arm or a cylinder arm, I would go ahead and um, turn the bag inside out and top stitch from the inside. Now on the back where our cell phone pocket is, we want to make sure we are only stitching to um, I stitched mine just to where my um, connectors ended on the back that so I don't accidentally sew shut that cell phone pocket. So here we go. We're going to top stitch these. starting the top stitching and ending the top stitching at those half inch marks that we made. So that's the front done. We went all the way across from half inch mark to half inch mark. We're going to hop on over to the side, put our needle down in that first half inch mark and top stitch across to the next half inch mark. And I'm doing this top stitching with a half an inch seam allowance. Or not half an inch, an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and then on this back side, we are doing it just slightly different. We're starting at that half inch mark that we made. And then just top stitching just slightly past where our connector is. Back stitching. And jumping over to the other side. And then this keeps our cell phone pocket open. And finish at the next half inch mark. And do the same with the very last side. So 
I'm just making sure that everything lines up, that it all looks good. It looks pretty good. My cell phone pocket works. Now it's time to close up the opening in the bottom of the bag. So I am opening up my zipper pocket, reaching in through the opening in the zipper pocket, grabbing the opening in the bottom of the bag, pulling it through the zipper pocket, matching up the raw edges of that opening and sewing it shut with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance from where our stitches stopped and started when we assembled our lining pieces. Once that is done, stuff that lining back in. Double check to make sure you didn't miss anything, that it's sealed. If it all looks good, go ahead and top stitch shut with the raw edges turned under the zipper pocket bottom. Once that's done, this is what we have. And you can see there is an option that you could turn this inside out and do stitches down the side to help it hold the shape. I find that I can just poke in those sides and it holds that shape just fine. So I'm not gonna do that part, but feel free to do it if you want to. Everything lines up perfectly. All I have to do is attach my handles, make sure my cell phone pocket is good, and then we're done. There you go. That's it. That's all. How amazing of a sew was this bag? And it, I don't know. It's just, I just, again, I love the shape. I'm all about the curves, all about the vintage feel. I just loved making it. Anyways, if you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. A thumbs up goes such a long way for us YouTubers. It helps us out greatly. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you'd like to support my channel further, you can always buy me a coffee. That link is down below um, in the description. Or if you'd like to join any of my sew along classes, that link down is down below on how to do that as well. Anyways, until the next one, bye.